Welcome to the start of my Let's Play for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duels of the Roses. I have to admit, it's been a while since I've last played this game, so I'm probably not going to be able to really speed through it very effectively. I might have to do like one opponent's like an episode or something just to make this a bit easier on myself. So yes, we're going to the British Empire in the 1480s. The Wars of the Roses, a power struggle between the houses of Lancaster and York, to decide what royal successor was nearing an end. When the Yorkists won the lead, the reign of Richard III, the third was about was but a step away. Jeez, I can't read right now. And France, Yuki, the last Lancastrian heir, was being forced to live a life of exile. Lancastrian forces were rendered powerless by ancient cards of sorcery wielded by set on his seven followers, who known as the Rose Crusaders, don't you mean who were known as the Rose Crusaders, served under the flag of Lord Crawford, a powerful Yorkist nobleman. Lacking a duel to champion their cause, defeat was imminent for the Lancastrians. In England, dual card games were still at the fledgling stage. Thus, the Lancastrians had to look elsewhere for a duel master capable of facing the Rose and Cruz in battle. With this in mind, Margaret Mai U4 of Lancaster secretly requested a high druid to summon a duelist from another age. Oh! Sound from the mystic circle of red and white roses, the one capable of harnessing pure power. There is truth to the legend of the Rose Duelist. Lady Margaret, I... I did. Now I have the means for defeating the evil forces of Rose and Cruz. Oh, my apologies. In my excitement, I had forgotten I was in the presence of the Rose Duelist. I introduce myself. I am Simon McMorrin, High Druid and Servant of Lancaster. Are you supposed to ask the name by which the Rose Duelist would like to be known? We'll just assume the Rose Duelist is female. Yeah, I know. Since I let you name it, it's supposed to be yourself. So it's whatever gender you want the character to be, I guess, right? Okami? A fine name indeed. Now here's the situation. The year is 1485, and you are currently in Stonehenge, near Salisbury, England. The British Empire is in turmoil, with the House of Lancaster's rightful claim to the throne being challenged by the Yorkist usurpers. The power struggle is referred to as the Wars of the Roses, a name based on the badges used by both sides. A red rose for Lancastrians and a white rose for the Yorkists. Right now our kingdom is threatened by the Yorkists and their wrongful claim to the throne. All because the Yorkists enjoy the support of the Rose Crusaders and their sorcerous white rose cards. Using our red rose cards we summoned you, will come to this day and age. We hope that your dueling experience would defeat the Rose Crusaders and lead us to victory. You will help us. Of course you will. Foolish of me to even doubt where your loyalties lie. Nor is it that only legendary Rose Duelist stands a chance against the power of Rose and Cruz. We appreciate any help you can provide against them. Nor I forget, I should warn you that the rules to dueling differ here from those of your age. Here in England, dueling is governed by what is known as the Perfect Rule. In addition to several minor distinctions, there are two major differences. One is the existence of movement or positioning, the other is the deck leader concept. These are two aspects of dueling that were lost in the process when the ancient sort sport of duel monsters was adapted to card form. The perfect rule represents these lost rules that were miraculously revived here in England. Perhaps a practice duel will serve better than an explanation, shall we? Oh no, we're not doing a practice duel. I know this game well enough to play without it. Even if it's been a while. First, Okami, you must select a deck to duel with. It's important that you feel the vibrations of a deck leader. The minute res resonations that ring true to your soul. The cards themselves draw their power from the energies of the Ancient Ones. The deck leader acts as an intermediate between the Ancient Ones and the deck wielder. Okami, it's essential that you select a card leader whose rhythm matches the strings of your soul. Your several decks from which to choose. Give it some serious thought and make your selection. 
Choose carefully, for the decks you select will guide the destiny of your duels. Ironically, no matter how many times you switch names, if you pick the same one, you're going to get the same deck, so... I could go with this one and try my hardest on taking down either Weeble or Rex. Honestly, I think you're better off taking... Like, this one's usually advertised as a decent deck. But I'm stupid, and we're going to go with the Maiden of Aqua. I see you've selected your deck. Hmm. So that's the effect of the Celtic Red Rose cards. Looks like there's some truth to the that the Red Rose cards are capable of time transformation. Who's there? It's been some time since the Battle of Barnett, old one. Rosencruz, what brings you here? Only remember the Rose Crusaders may call me by that name. If you may recall, I told you once before that you may only address me as Seto. Or does memory fail you, old man? And you, you must be the dreaded Rose Duelist. I must admit there's a certain aura of power emanating from you. The introduction is in this order. I am Seto, Seto, leader of the Rose Crusaders. Their members are a little group who prefer to call me by the name of C. Rosenbergs. Ask you again, what brings you here, Sato? Sato. Why do I keep calling him Sato? Whatever. Mind your manners, old man. What else would bring me here? I've come for the Red Rose cards. After all, it was you who showed me how the summoning capabilities would evolve when the Red Coat Red Rose cards are, combined with the transport powers of the White Rose cards. You're thinking of attending the Forbidden Rose summoning. If so, then the Red Rose cards must never fall into your evil hands. Card sorcery taps in the powers of the Ancient Ones. By the very nature, each card is a double-edged sword that can cut both ways. The Rose cards alone harness tremendous power. There's no telling what happened, what horrors one might unleash to the world by combining both red and white. I'll sacrifice my own life if need be to prevent any from uttering the Spell of Doom. The Spell of Doom? Fool! The 16 red and white rose cards grant power over all. Druid legend has twisted the true meaning of these cards. These rose crusaders have sworn to credit as utopia free from the ravages of war. We intend to accomplish this with the power of the cards. And we shall do so by extending the rule of Richard III throughout the known world. By the way, it was clever of you to form a circle of red roses within the white rose barrier to summon the rose duelist. But you are foolish to come alone. This area is surrounded, and if you wish to leave with your life, you will do so only by handing over the red rose cards. <laughs> Sorry. Me? A fool? Then what about you? Are you fool enough to actually believe the red rose cards would remain here in my possession? Right after summoning, I had the cards dispersed among our best duels to keep them from you. From your tainted hands. Uh, probably you are, right? Then you leave me with but one option. I shall list the eight of your precious rose duelist. You take leave of your senses. And you speak too soon, old man. Heed my words, duelist. If you wish to return to your proper time period, You'll require 16 cards of the red and white roses. The red and white positions must be laid out in reverse of the summoning order to send you home. You know the spell? Since you need the 16 rose cards just as much as we do, I propose a partnership. Help us gather the cards and I shall guarantee your return after we've achieved our ultimate goal. An absurd proposal. You think that the Honorable Okami would even lend ear to your... Ridiculous proposal. You'd be so sure, old man. Let me see. Simon's side has eight of the red rose cards, while my side, the rose crusaders, has possession of the eight white rose cards. As the numbers are even, simple arithmetic indicates that you could side with either of us. But I'm sure you'll take into account who's winning this war. After all, who was desperate enough to summon you in the first place? I think it's quite clear which side is better positioned to send you home. Okami, heed not the words of this this power-hungry lunatic. Simon, must you resort to name-calling? I'm hurt. I'll tell you what. 
Why don't we leave the decision to our dear duelist? After all, Simon, the duelist future is not for us to decide now, is it? Well, yes, but... Splendid. In keeping with the tradition of the old temple gardens, I offer you a choice, duelist. Here are two roses. The white represents me and the red for old Simon here. For the sake of justice, choose the red rose. Stand by my side, duelist. Choose the white rose. Now, you have to take the game through um, both paths if you want to unlock the ultimate duelist. So, you have no choice but to basically choose either one, then take the other later. We're going to side with Seto first, on the grounds that taking out Taya is a lot easier than taking care of Weevil or Rex. Uh, so, yeah, we're going this route because it's a bit easier. A wise choice, duelist. I see you're well versed in judging a situation. Welcome to the Rose Crusaders. I am honored. Okay, old man, it's time you made yourself scarce. What, what are you doing? Stop! No! Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. I just need you out of the way until everything is settled. Well, let's talk about the Red Rose cards. So I mentioned that I'd spread the cards amongst certain individuals just after summoning you. I think it's safe to assume that a large number of those individuals are as confederates currently located in France. I'd like to ask you to enter France from Dover and retrieve those cards for our cause. I'd go myself. I remind me here to maintain our barrier against any invading forces. According to legend, one must use a deck whose cost is lower than opponents to capture a rose card of another color. Remember, a deck that costs lower than that of an opponent is the key. I'll start somewhere that the Celts inherited their red rose cards from the original inhabitants of Stonehenge. This would mean that our enemy, Yuki, who comes from a line of Welsh nobility, would likely have inherited one of the red rose cards. This means that those who oppose the red rose crusaders are sufficiently equipped to duel against us as equals. Given their desperate situation, they'll retaliate with everything they've got. It'd be wise not to underestimate them. I'm depending on you. Yes, but this side's easier to deal with than the other. Uh, lesson we'll never forget, eh? Perhaps. Perhaps not. If you take the um, Arc Knight, it's actually easier to go, I guess, through um, Weevil, because you get a deck that's full of insects. At least some good insects. Aquamaiden has a lot more um, weak cards. I guess it's meant to do, like, fusions, but you don't get many um, options with it. So you wouldn't bother with it. Like, you can use Aqua and a Serpent if I had one to create the always useful um, Aqua Dragon. I don't have one right now. Now, how many stars you get? Um, I'm sorry, how many summons you can do. Oh, I didn't know. I was expecting that to work, actually. Okay, that's cool. All spaces within range of one space are transformed to C-Train when this card is flipped face up. Okay. In turn. I need to keep that fusion in my mind here. I wasn't expecting that to happen. Oh, shoot. Cars flip face up, all penguin knights are strengthened by 800 points. Oh no, we don't want to fuse that on that spot. That'd be bad. All other penguin knights, I guess, are strengthened by 800 points. Okay. That might have been a bad summon to make. Um. Darn it. 
I guess. Oh, that's right. She has a lot of weaker cards, so you can experiment around with fusions. It's reading somewhere, though, that Aqua and Sea Serpent meets Aqua Dragon. Oh, well. I ain't too worried about it. But I'm not watching their um, battle, because forget that. Oh, it's Spellbound me? Nice effect. Next turn. type advantage we can just run forward and charge so that's what we're gonna do we'll lose our attack boost though but you know what I'll hit for 1800 and that's good enough for me that car's not gonna have power advantage either that one might be strong enough to mess with me though no it's not sad Whatever. We'll plop you on the field. And slam into this thing. Guess we can watch this match. Considering it'll be the decisive match, I believe. Yes, attack mode. This isn't all that impressive, usually, in my opinion. That's why you just don't bother watching these effects, because they're long and tedious. After a while, at least that's how they feel. I don't care if I'm spellbound, you have no more hit points. Now the hard part, getting cards in the slot. Great, a useless card. I don't even get multiple copies of Fake Trap. Oh well. Don't worry about blasting more later. Guess I lost. It pains me to know that I lack the strength to protect my lord in love. I really got beaten by though, because I want to take the sea path over here eventually. I gotta at least beat Tristan to do that. Honestly, I don't know what he's got going for him. I don't think he's really got a massive field advantage, but that's alright. Not password. I don't think I can reincarnate a card though. Gotta go through what's I wanna say three duels first. Sad. I'll take a shot at Tristan. I don't think he's got that many surprises, unlike certain opponents, he doesn't really get much of field advantage either, so. Hold it. You're the one they call the duelist, right? If you want to go any further, you'll have to face me and my crab walker strategy. 
That sounds like a very painful strategy to implement. Crab walking? Ugh. Oh yes, he gets one of the most diverse fields. Um. Teleports to own summoning area when this car is flipped face up. Bonus points will engage in a battle with machine monsters. Well, that's not very helpful. Like at all. Shoot, I should have flipped it face up and just charged that thing. Count though on the field it's going towards, but no. Oh, it does. Good. Let's see. Oh, I have a sea serpent. Great. I bet this one only has less attack bar than mine does. Haha. <laughs> You might have been hot stuff on the magic field card, Yami, but you're nothing now. Oh yeah, and this thing is gone. Got him. Probably want to slice it. He is screwed. Hmm. Gain some more attack points. Um. Taking it out with that. No, I couldn't. Should have. What the? Why is he selling way out there? Is he gonna try and come from the side? I 
Okay, going way out there. Won't be strong enough to counter me. That card's doing it all. Oh, he made the mistake of getting too close, man. What the? Our flicked to life points and battle the runs reduced to zero. I'm assuming only for that card, though. We actually can play this and then hit him directly because he pulled his card out of the way. Got a bit sloppy there, is all I'm saying. Gosh, damn it. I've been having really terrible luck with these slots. I haven't picked up one other card yet. So that's fake trap. Man, I'm really out of practice. I don't believe it. You beat the crap out of me. Yes, well, Mai's not going to go down as easily. She plays on a f field that's far more advantageous to herself. You can't just take up root in the middle with, an, like, an aqua deck or something and wait her out. So that's what, this is going to be the end of the episode. I'm going to have to grind, try and get some cards that I can either power myself up or build a whole new deck with. Until next time, then. See ya.